So question 11 says, analyze the polynomial function f of x equals x squared times the quantity x plus 3 using parts a through e. So the first thing says, to determine, determine the end behavior of the graph of the function. So this is where they want that power function. So notice that the power function is going to be the degree of the, of the polynomial. So notice how we have a degree 2 and then a degree 1 factor. Together, they'll, they'll, they make a degree 3. And the leading coefficients are 1. So y equals x cubed would be how this graph is going to behave. It's going to behave like a cubic function. So to find the x-intercepts, remember, we just set this equal to 0. So we set x squared times x plus 3 equal to 0. We set y equal to 0, in other words. And since it's already a factor, we just set each factor equal to 0. So x squared is going to equal 0, and x plus 3 is going to equal 0. So x is going to equal 0, and x is going to equal negative 3. And also, as far as multiplicities go, since this was a power of 2, this has a multiplicity of 2. So I'm going to put m of 2 for multiplicity of 2. And since this was only one of those, this, that's going to have a multiplicity of 1. So I'm just going to put m of 1. So the x-intercepts are this 0 and this negative 3. So the x-intercepts we got, now the y-intercept, we're going to have to set um, x equals 0 to solve for y. So we're going to have now this y equals this x squared times x plus 3. And we're going to replace x with 0. So y equals 0 squared times 0 plus 3. That's going to be 0 times 3, which is going to be 0. So the y-intercept will be 0. So again, if I look at the graph of this function, y equals, if I clear that off and do x squared times the quantity x plus 3. If I graph that, most of my windows all messed up. So if I hit zoom, number 6. Notice that it does have an x-intercept at negative 3. It does have an x-intercept at 0. It does have a y-intercept at 0. So that's kind of verifying what we've got so far. So it says determine the zeros of the function and their multiplicities. So remember, zeros are the same thing as x-intercepts. So we've already did all this work up here. So the zeros are 0 and negative 3. So based on what we saw up there, the lesser 0, which is the negative 3, has a multiplicity of 1. So the less zero of the function is a multiplicity of 1. So the graph is going to, remember, multiplicity is 1. It's going to cross. So it's going to cross. The graph of f crosses the x-axis. And it's going to cross, cross the x-axis at that x-intercept, which is going to be negative 3. The greater 0, which is the 0, that had a multiplicity of 2 because it had a power of 2. So there's two of those. So since there's a multiplicity of two, what the graph is going to do, it's going to actually touch and turn. So they just say touches. So it's going to touch and kind of turn back around. It touches the x-axis, and it's going to touch the x-axis at x equals zero, since that was the x-intercept. So determine the maximum number of turning points. So remember, if you add up the multiplicities, that gave us a degree three. So the maximum number of turning points is going to be this 3 minus 1, which is going to, again, be this 2. And we can kind of see that we do hit two turning points over here, one turn and two turns, if you look at the graph over here on the left. So part E says, use the information above and draw the graph. So we've kind of done that. And it looks like our graph looks like this last one here. So that kind of completes question 11.